Good afternoon everybody, thank you for coming to this talk in this very big Maker Faire room, which is hard to find a place. Um, we would like to discuss with you the Make It uh, European project, it's an Horizon 2020 project. Uh, it started last January, it's going to last 2016 and 2017. And it's about understanding and experimenting the collective aware platforms, which is showing these uh, cups. For the governance of making initiatives. So that's why we are going to make a fair discussion this evening. So, of course, we have a very long list of partners, but at least here today, some of them appear, so we have the content if you want to talk with us. And uh, it's important the consortium. Uh, out of it is for the research, their research partners, out of them are maker partners. I'm an IEC fellow of Barcelona, we are. A bit of maker and research. So it's the only Okay, yeah. <laughs> the only one who are both researcher and maker are DTI and IEC, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have Eno, DTI, <laughs> uh, the Center for Social Innovation in Vienna, Tudor in Dortmund, IEC Palo Barcelona, Pablo Plager, Epilab in Vienna, the Science Center in Estonia, and Creative Trial in Denmark. So this is introduction about plus transformation, so why we are focusing on this, okay? Um, there are several examples of platforms. So one is this, this is Fablabs.io, it's a official platform of Fablabs, it's been developed for at least uh, a couple of years, or even more, almost three years, at Pablo Barcelona, and it started for, with the idea of mapping of the labs, also started with the networking then, and it's a bit of a mix also bottom up and curated platform, so it's a bit uh, more refined than the just a, a list, and it's open source, we're developing on GitHub, and we are, it's a custom platform, so we also develop it from scratch, so it's not just a work for us, it's not like, so it's really dedicated to this. Active Spaces, for example, they have their own platform, Active Spaces of Work, uh, it's much simpler because they have a wiki, with media wiki and available list, so they're using existing open software, so they're not only a specific platform, specific platform for makers. Uh, Makerspace.com is a platform that's more recent. It was launched one year ago. Uh, it was the more social network of makers on the laboratories. And as far as I know, it's not open source. But also, of course, we have all the other platforms that are still out there that are useful for makers. So we have platforms for developing projects, for example, Peter. Of course, platforms for uh, funding projects, commercializing projects, like Kickstarter. Okay, so there's a very big ecosystem of platforms, not just specific for makers, but can be very useful for makers. For a broad toward maker, a bit more. So, regarding this steps, what's the objective of the project? Uh, so, the project aims at understanding the role of this collective online platform, which are online platforms that are more focused on the social dimension, social innovation, and the bottom up dimension of uh, these initiatives. Um, so how this platform can in, uh, enable the growth and the governance of the maker movement, and especially in uh, creating social innovation and making this movement uh, sustainable. So the ones we can have new ideas, innovation, but they, they don't last for time. And, uh, we are not really pushing this, this new uh, possibility forward. And of course, the idea is to learn from makers, but understand issues about platforms that could be also told as how the making movement can apply in other domains. Uh, so we, since this is also a research project, we also start with some questions that we would like to address for the project. So, uh, how can maker communities achieve sustainability and organize themselves? What do makers do? How do they behave in this framework? And what value do we create and how it relates with society? So what's the relationship with maker movement and society? Is it affecting society or is it just two people working and there is no value created? And then ask how can we have their governance, their impact, and sustainability. So the whole main framework of the project can be summarized with this picture, where we have on one side we have organizational governance of major initiatives, but it could be big and small communities or movement, how they generate peer collaborative behaviors and 
how they back influence the organizational governance and how both these have a, an impact. So which value they create. So if we have a, an organization, a governance, do we have another impact for this <coughs> organization? How they relate? How can we improve the value of them? This is that main. These of course are quite immaterial and intangible uh, <coughs> elements, so it's, it's not a typical perspective we can put about machines, materials, and places, so it's also something that is not directly uh, easy to communicate, but it's also something that is really effective. People working in a lab, they do the print, they do a lot of materials, electronics, but there is this thing about governance and making the project sustainable that is affecting their work in a way. So the approach is based on three directions. Uh, when we are studying from case studies and case studies, we also study the uh, state of the art for technology and think about future scenarios for technology. And then, based on this two research, we are going to implement new features, features you know, technological enhancement, and test them with the input. So that's why we are adopting actual research. So it's not a desktop research, but we are, we are going to work with the community. It's going to take place next year. So that's all the European projects. We have different work packages. Uh, now here, the, the only interesting thing, without going too much into detail, uh, is that we have three work packages mostly addressing this, this direction, so they can study the technology and enhancement. And they're uh, in, uh, integrated, uh, they're, they cross with the three pillars of organization and governance, uh, collaborative activities and value creation and impact. So these three aspects are uh, addressed in all the activities. They are not separated, but it's clear. Uh, so we have think case studies. We are now submitting the, the first part of the study. We are trying to understand all the figure of governance, uh, organization, impact, stability, and what we can learn from them. We are from Spain, Estonia, Austria, Germany, uh, Italy, Swallow, Vino, Netherlands. And for this, we want to have some uh, input, for example. And also some of them will also be the specific cases where we're going to do actual research later. So again, we are trying to understand what now, what the situation, and then see what the new features and enhancements will bring to so this data before and after. So regarding technology scenarios, uh, we are indicating the set of the art for ICT technologies, especially for the web tabs, and also all technology developed by Maker and used by Maker. Of course, maker technology, we already have a lot of discussion about this, it's, it's a very broad field. So uh, it's important thing that the focus is also on, on makers. So it could be the help of makers or the companies, but the important thing that they have some connection with the community. And then also based on this, we are also trying to develop forward scenarios, so future scenarios about how these technologies can be then for sure improved or adopted by platform and so on. And then the part <coughs> about actual research, so the important thing about actual research again is a, is a research that doesn't aim only at having a practical or knowledge, but also seeing really the impact of what we're doing. Uh, so we want to also to understand how to bring knowledge from the other part of the, of the project and implement it with, with gaps. We are developing right now the plan for 2017. So as a concrete example, I think that we, we already chosen some directions Maybe because we have a long list of possibilities that we can add to the I think that uh, we will choose very few uh, directions and then we're going to implement features, of, for example, how labs are able and that with the top labs. And then learn from that how they can use that, how it is perceived, how it's actually used, even after the project. And for this, understand also if you can scale and use the features. Also, one of the last parts of the project is actually thinking about the strategy about the future of the project even when it ends. This project will end in December 2020, so one of the last things is thinking about the strategy for after the project. Could be more projects or it could be uh, no European project or something simpler, but it's the idea of seeing if we have an impact on that means. Uh, we also uh, mm, started to adopt a, what's called a, four, a quadruple model of stakeholders, which means we are trying to address uh, all the people that will be interested in this project along four directions. Uh, one is society, so civil society, uh, like communities, associations, 
And of course, that will be also papers, individual papers. Then all the research and facilitation work, so academic work, entities, consultancies, and again, makers are part of this work. Uh, then we will like, of course, to get involved some policy makers, because they are again, on the on maker book, especially, by, for example, the publicity project the of understanding the impact of the project done by people in public, and so on, how the impact at the global level or bigger level than just one project, one just in the lab. Uh, and then, of course, economic actors, so entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, uh, funding, venture capital, and again, here we can add makers. We could probably even have makers in the policy makers, but probably it's a bit more difficult at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we have set up a website which is uh, make-it.io, where we have all the documentation that's already uh, available. But we also present also uh, all the documentation we are going to uh, develop in the future round. Software data, we are trying to do some also visualization and data analysis about the maker movement and the gaps that they are using. Uh, and also that's a place where we would like to have more discussion also with, uh, with more stakeholders. Uh, or at least document also the discussion happening in other places and so on. So we are also trying to uh, interview makers in this day, the Maker Fair. Uh, also the way for getting dark uh, ideas from them. And these are more like the series of three questions we always ask him. And it's not just a way for us to understand what makers or stakeholders are interested in, but also uh, making them more aware about what you could get from making, what you could ask from making. Uh, it's more probably a very quick way for us to really make it is this, what do you like to do with this? So, so of course, the first question is what your experience regarding uh, all the issues related to governance and collaborative behaviors to make a movement. So, if it work, uh, we need more governance, less different, and so on. What's your dispute? Then, what's the dispute regarding the issues related to the impact of the movement? It's probably even broader. Uh, and then, of course, the kind of these, the governance, collaborative behaviors, and the impact, what would you expect that such a project to uh, be doing for you? Of course, we already have most of the plan I decided there was a proposal, we are setting up. Uh, but first, more input is, is welcome and understanding how it will go. So that was the short presentation. We can have a bit more of discussion now. Solidify, they become institutionalized, right? yeah. like the social economy has to some extent. Right? Maybe it's wrong way. I, don't know. I think maybe part of the reasoning why we want to do this is because, because of that ad hoc dynamic nature of the government, yeah. that there's certainly uh, potential for a lot of initiatives, make initiatives, to learn from the government's lessons that have been learned elsewhere. Might, applied. Might, like the sharing economy, might even go back to personal computing, maybe you know, in the 80s and yeah. 90s. You know, wow. yeah. So uh, we think it's certainly an area where the CAPS idea, this collective awareness platforms could 
could, could uh, provide a basis for, for a quick boost in the, in the quality of the maker initiatives because they can uh, organize and govern themselves uh, better rather than just reinvent that wheel a million times. Because actually, what, what came out of the, the meeting yesterday, one of the things that came out was this idea that which we, we had in our logic called the, the unusual suspects. Right? And the people who are, who are, are, are making, we don't know it, and not linked, or they should be. <laughs> or they're, as, as what's his name, Daniel said, who are using the tools, or using the processes, or having the same aims, but not, they're not connected, right? So making, so it, for me it's not just governance of the existing maker community, because they all know they're doing it. But it's also making it more mainstream. Ma 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 and change, changing wider behavioural practices in society with, with that ethos so of not just consuming but also making and creating. Uh, I, I think that's an important issue which we came out of the meeting from yesterday, which was quite strong, which I think is good. And Sherry, what, did, what would you understand by the term? I mean, well, so it feels, like, it feels like really what you're saying is pulling together community, you know, whether it's community that knows they are makers or not, you know. Uh, I mean, I think, I, and, I, and I do think that the maker movement in general suffers from, you know, sort of silos of innovation, yeah. but, uh, and, not, and not being able to build on the relationships and the communities around them. And so yeah. to be able to provide them with a better, better ways, better, better pathways to finding other makers is, is good. Yeah. That's different than what I think of governance though. So, uh, but I, I get it. You know, so I, when I, you think of governance, what are you thinking of governance? Well, governance, governance is kind of like, you know, um, it's it's alignment. Um, yeah. But it, and, and as you say, it's rules of the road, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't I don't know that we're very good at that yet, mm -hmm. that kind of governance. But, but it's nice to have alignment, and yeah, yeah. and that's I, I think alignment is probably. More what I'm thinking of when you say governance. So like more norms, yeah. rather mm -hmm. than uh, uh, imposed. Correct. Uh, Correct. Well, it can be in per se, it can be informed as well, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, there, there, I mean, what, what, what are the um, up to now? What are the in, intrinsic or accepted norms? It's open. It's open source. It's sharing. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? I mean, you, you know, well, we have a charter. We, have we a charter, do have yeah. a charter. Well, yeah. That's a formal, semi-formal rule. It's, semi -formal it's formal, <laughs> it's, yeah, and, and formal at the same time. It's a charter. It's a, it's a very generic, well, I would say, not generic, but simple way of putting people yeah. on the same page with uh, values. It's a values. very, very lightweight framework. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and semi informal Fab charter. Is it really in great to I'm sorry. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. I mean, certainly the community has plenty of had, has had plenty of opportunity to comment on it, to you know, give feedback. And uh, yeah, I mean, when, when we were small, it kind of came before like a very consensus. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Then yeah. it has been challenging to actually do up, update it. Right. But and especially the larger we are, the harder it is to update it. <laughs> it's easy for a small yeah. community to make rules and agree to them, or even yeah. uh, norms and agree to them, but once you get bigger, mm -hmm. much more difficult. Well, they say sometimes the, the rules are there to be broken. Yeah, yeah, the exactly. reason for a rule is because someone's going to break it one time. So, I mean, with that, I can't, it's almost like an anathema with the, the, with the maker movement. You can't break the rules because we don't want rules. Mm -hmm. We don't care about rules, right? I was going to say, one of, one of the, you know, in general for the maker movement, and this is certainly a bad last, we know, but for the maker movement, are there sort of, have you run across general sort of... Maker manifesto? Yeah, like a maker manifesto? I think the DTI have that. It does have a set of, I'm not sure what they call it. It's in Danish, so I can't But <laughs> <laughs> they do have this, you know, expectations about behavior and expectations about uh, the way you work, things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. one, in, one in the Netherlands, which we looked at, has a contract in fact. Does it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's more the interesting. Maybe yeah. to look at some of those. And but, but if we look, for instance, um, ten years ago, at least, 
That's right. <laughs> last, uh, Cherry was editing, and yes. the she was establishing contact with new labs when they joined the network. establish a kind of longer term stability, then they're going to need to commercialize in some form or another. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a for-profit commercialization, but it could be, or it could be other forms. And in order to, for them to achieve the sustainable uh, or social um, objectives that they have, then they need to be able to be around for long enough, and they need good people to attract the people. So they, this commercial aspect to it is going to be important. And then as soon as you've got that, then you've got more hard governance issues. About uh, what the finance brings with it. And um, yeah. 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 commercialization, I mean, I would say monetization is more important than the last Commercialization is not just a profit, but monetization doesn't necessarily. It just means you want to be more sustainable. Right. Yeah. 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 There, there are. I mean, it's a kind of definition of issues, terms. but either way, yeah. it's going to be the governance is going to become harder. Of course, definitely, yeah. yeah. It has to be formal governance. Because you have to have certain rules. And right. you can't just get away with an informal, <laughs> norm based uh, uh, form of governance anymore, I guess. Mm. Not for all. Actually, I was asking if we know. We don't know everybody. We know everybody. Let's introduce yourself. Well, I'll, I was just here to be a quick person. So, uh, I've been following the Fab Lab movement on the side. I'm a friend of yours, so I know ah, okay. Okay. So uh, well. what it's after. Yeah. Uh, I might, I'm even planning, you know, if time permits, to uh, get on the Fab Lab Academy next year. Ah. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was, uh, it was just cool. So it's very uh, interesting to hear, you know, hearing your discussion from here. Gianluca. 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 I'm a PhD student here and I'm uh, in study urban studies and I'm interested in some way to connect the makers and the users. <laughs> <laughs> and you know. Yeah. 
think um, uh, one of the very first people in the network, uh, one of the first champions in the network, was a gentleman by the name of Mel King. He was in urban studies at MIT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, you, you, there's, a, there's a nice track record of your type. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in Joker for a while. Uh, that's right. That's true. That's true.
I took you by the front here, really probably know more about Fab Labs than anyone in the universe. I've been so now. I'm learning from this. So how, <laughs> how do you think it should happen, this connecting to designers, marketers and others? So I, I mean, it's exactly as you describe. I mean, we have a lot of demand for that now. As, you know, a fab lab can't be everything. It can't be an incubator. If it's, you know, it's really a part of typing facility and a learning yeah. environment. And yeah. So they do become islands of innova uh, innovation in a way because you'll invent something. Say you are successful and you get to that point, then what do you do? Yeah. You know, yeah. and so um, one idea that we're going to try and pilot in the, or model in the next year is to create ecosystems where we are tied to, where we can tie ourselves to, you know, sort of incubation services, as it were, you know. And what, as well as um, uh, you know, to sort of like higher education, where you might be able to tap into some of the engineering capabilities of a, a local university, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that being said, we are starting to see not in fab labs, but sort of in university settings, we're starting to see these, uh, you know, from drawing to market type ecosystems uh, evolving within educational institutions. So um, they will pull from the um, student body, as it were, you know, sort of graduate student body, um, all of the talent, different kinds of talents that they need, and they will, you know, sort of see a project through for money in some cases, in some cases for free, just so that they can learn. Um, but you can see a project all the way from idea to, you know, sort of thinking about the the feasibility and the business plan and the, you know, and, is that and, like putting and a then the prototyping, thing, thing, et cetera. Kind of complementary team together, or is that more just advising and coaching the individual? No, it's, it's like a team. They do put together a real team, oh, okay. and that team, you know, potentially earns some money on, on that, too, or at least uh, makes it uh, self sustained There are a few models for that in, in the States right now. I think that it's actually kind of an interesting model, but I don't know if that's us, you know, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For instance, like in, in Barcelona, I'm trying to think that the Fab Academy graduates we have working in the team, they are like, we are, I was counting, counting today, we are 19 people. Mm -hmm. um, most, of them, most of them full time. Wow. So it's more like a, the, the, the lab, not, not just the Fab Lab, but you know, the Fab Lab, the Green Fab Lab, the, the EU projects we are doing, so it's 19 people. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I would say like only, 25% of them, four or five people are really glad how academic graduates or really with this kind of maker mentality. Technical. Um, or, or like, a, not maker mentality, I would say a lot of them are technical also mm -hmm. because we have like uh, engineers, electronic engineers or developers, but they don't necessarily went through the power academy or they are not like, a, they don't probably they don't tag themselves as, as makers and they see it more like as a kid's game kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in our context, we have designers, we have um, anthropologists, uh, sociologists, uh, just living around the lab uh, and, and not as a prototyping facility, but as a research, <laughs> more like a research and development uh, center, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Um, but that, that's coming from the growth, the natural growth of the lab. It's not something that you think ahead. It's not like, it's not like I, I need a sociologist. No, it's like, okay, I have an opportunity to do the this project and this project is a sociology, this is the person that actually makes the perfect match. So you, it's like building as soon as you go. So also it's, it's, I think it's part of the mentality, no? on, on this opportunity, being opportunistic and you know, okay, let, let, let me find. It's the same that you do with hardware or putting together stuff, you put together a team, you put together the skills and then you respond to it. Yeah. It sounds like it's, it's not that like you make a plan and then you follow the plan. No, it's not, no. It would never be like that. It sounds like there are different development paths. So one development path is to commercialize something to to make a product of yourself. Another one is to, the path towards indeed to more like university departments, research. Yeah. And maybe there's another path to more uh, maybe actually the urban thing, more like um, to uh, 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 governmental planning kind of. You could maybe develop in different yeah. terms. For me, Steve, I mean, in a, I see that like we are all in, in our lab, and, but it's a very unique lab. It's the truth. You can see it like a, for its age, for its context, and, and, and also like the, the, the people that is working there. It's, it's a really it's a, an amazing thing on Massimo or Mara. So it's really unique, but I see all 
like uh, we want to we commercialize so we work with policymakers we teach we do research we publish papers we do we do a fair we you know so i this kind of uh, role I, I see that you know it's playing almost all the roles so try to play the roles of, uh, almost all those roles in, in, if you want to make impact on what you're doing and then also the like the venture uh, or, or incubator rather the incubator kind of role i what i think is i, I see like the lab is is, is, is just um is the means of, of for many ends mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so then you have like a, this you know so what, things what living ends? around for the ends <laughs> what's what what are the ends many at the end yes, yeah, many. Many. <laughs> It's Fab City, for us it's yeah. Fab City, for us it's Fab Lab Salio, for us yeah. it's uh, yeah. Fab yeah. Academy. And there could be other things as well, other yeah. types of incubations. And yeah, it's like a whatever. Yeah. But I also wonder, I mean, if you tell me, but um, the fact that you are, you're not associated this with the university, but you are, in essence, a higher education institution, mm -hmm. so you attract a certain kind of talent around mm -hmm. you. Yeah, maybe that has a little bit to do with Yeah, what about if you're a fab lab in an in impoverished area, one of my volunteers? Right, right. You know, it might not be quite the same. It actually, in our case, it's in Croatia. Well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In Zagreb, it's based in the University of Fund, and they want to get out because they're mm. finding that to restrict some it. people are reluctant to go there because it's kind of the elite and the, 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 the system. Well, this, this is very accessible, this one. Yeah. I mean, the Barcelona. Well, that's why I put in the proposal, you know, the, the uh, London Dairy, Dairy and from Belfast to in, 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 in working class areas run by some almost volunteers, you know, talking to people who have got no skills, yeah. <laughs> uh, no job, <laughs> and no aspirations. To give them aspirations and give them some new skills and give them some collective sense of community of working together. But you see, it's like a, the, the, the agenda of the lab is actually highly, is, is highly sensitive to the context. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, that sometimes I struggle because... Yeah. It's, more more about, it's more about the context, it's the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also the people, totally. Like yeah. the yeah. person that is running the lab. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Estonia is the country in Europe which has made the most progress in IT and in society yeah. and probably is the leading country now, right? I don't know, it's, well, it depends how you measure it, right? In IT? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, you're joking. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Far more the leaders in, I'm working for the many government in the different countries around the world. Right? It's <laughs> they are, really. You're hoping that you will all become a new resident of Estonia. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can do that. I'm pretty much in my company in Estonia, I'm not Denmark, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I work for the e-government academy a lot, if you know those guys. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, that's not yeah. <laughs> you, you had one more question? I have a question. Actually, it's a joke. But, uh, <laughs> 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 no, but I discovered, the, the fact is that I discovered a, a very stupid question. That uh, when I ask this question to the make, makers, uh, they, they, they open <laughs> the sea like uh, the Red Sea. Uh, Feature that they have uh, invented a machine okay, inside of uh, inside the lab. Okay. Do I sell the, the hardware or do I sell the software? Which means that the other one is uh, for free, it's open source. Mm -hmm. But I have to earn something from my research. Okay. So where I'm going to find that money? Selling the hardware or selling the software? Mm -hmm. And that means that the other one is open, is open source. But it's unbelievable because there are two schools, <laughs> two philosophical schools that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that grow up. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I think it's uh, uh, connected to the, the idea of governance 
for the community and uh, for project management side, uh, the inner side of the, the lab. Um, I, I experience every day that uh, the problem is what kind of market we have outside the lab. Mm -hmm. So, when I say we need the project management to help uh, the inventors to, uh, to finish their job, uh, the, the road is not open because uh, sometimes it's very easy to call China and make produce one million of that, uh, of that stuff. Yeah, they should send mm. promise. Yeah. With yeah. and make it which is a, a kind of answer that we give to vendors which uh, make us really sad because we have other alternatives sometimes because now companies uh, knock to our door every day more you know, in uh, the same uh, countries uh, but with their type of uh, business mm -hmm. which is a uh, classical mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. when we, we tell them that the that has grown in an open source uh, uh, world, that means that we have to give back something to the network. They, they cannot accept it, they are not prepared to accept it. So I, so it is, I think it's a yeah. very important issue to understand and propose an alternative. Yeah, I think one thing is how when you say like, like uh, what you're going to sell, it's, I, I think that it's a different way to ask yourself which is who is going to pay for it. I think it's a different approach. I mean, use because you want some, someone to pay for the stuff they're doing. It's different than thinking about selling it. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, you can, you can still have users on um, anything you do, for instance. Let's see that you want people to have, say, the, the um, City of Rome say that every family should have a 3D printer. And they pay for every family to have a 3D printer. That, you know, if you think about the past, there's you know, very, a, a lot of times in which a government put a, a washing machine in the houses of people. Yeah. So that's someone else paying for that 3D printer that you do, but then you probably you. This is a with the PCs. Um, for instance, yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. exactly. Same person. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have, then you, you well, with that infrastructure, then you have a lot of business opportunity. Yeah. But you know, you still sold the machines, mm -hmm. but some you yeah. didn't you didn't sell it one by one. But someone else paid for those machines, and yeah. then probably you are having services and products. And no, and also you can uh, pay, you can give away the hardware and software, and the people pay for a service or yeah. pay for some other advice. It's, it's one, one of the, the best uh, answers we no, can give. Yeah. 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 So we know that uh, for instance. It's a question that we have with the smart city sending. We are getting to a point that we know that if we want to go big, we will need to the, the governments to buy kits and give it to the people. Mm -hmm. That's the only way it, that it will be successful yeah. from the hard hardware point yeah. of view. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do not compromise even of being an open source. Right? And you get the payback within a number of years, you get more swipe working out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Distribution in the market. So, yeah. mm -hmm. what, no, I was just going to say the uh, alternatively, there is a lot of interest in places like Shenzhen um, because they don't have a lot of innovation they feel like coming out of their country, which I don't agree entirely with that, but um, I would say that by and large, the large companies, corporations there, are starting to invest in like small inventors like yourself, you know, and they'll invite you to come and pay for you to come for, you know, a month or two, and they'll pay for all your uh, expenses and they will provide, you know, sort of the business um, business planning and those kinds of services that mm -hmm. you're talking about. So you can get it funded, but what do they want in return? You know, is it, it's like a venture capital.